Hello everyone, welcome back to another interesting video from Learn Autosar Basics. Today, we'll be discussing about Autosar OS. Let's begin. First, let's understand what is an OS. An operating system is a system software which manages hardware and the software resources. So, basically it acts as an interface between application user and the hardware. OS can be classified into many categories based on the target system. In this video, we'll mainly focus on real-time operating system. For any OS to be classified as real-time, it has to adhere to certain deadlines. Let's suppose you have written any application which is supposed to perform an action in 10 milliseconds, then Arto should guarantee that the task will be performed before the deadline. Now let's jump to Autosar OS. It is a type of Artos which is mainly derived from OSEC OS. Autosar OS has predictable and documented behavior and it can be configured and scaled statically. It can be ported to many different microcontrollers, even the ones which has low end resources. It provides many features and functions such as memory protection and timing protection. We can also classify OS based on their scalability classes. SC1 is implemented based on OSEC OS and includes scheduled tables. OS under SC2 comes with time synchronization and monitoring the time behavior of individual tasks and interrupt service routines or ISRs. OS under SC3 comes with memory protection mechanisms on MCUs with a suitable hardware support. And at last, SC4 combines the scalability classes of SC2 and SC3. OSEC OS provides numerous features such as alarms and counters, tasks, type of scheduling, interrupts, processing levels, event, resource handling and error handling. We will go through these features one by one in this video. Microcontroller hardware provides timers which are derived from the hardware clock. These timers are used to generate the system time. Counters are the operating system object that registers a count in ticks. Counters can be incremented by either hardware timers or software APIs. Counters are used to drive alarms and schedule tables. Now let's look what is a task. A task is the smallest schedulable unit managed by the OS. The OS scheduler decides when which task can run on the CPU. A runnable entity of a software component runs in the context of a task. Here in this example you can see that this task will be executed every 5 millisecond and will perform some IO operation. The OS provides concurrent and asynchronous execution of tasks. A task can be classified into basic and extended task based on their state change. A task which is currently being executed by CPU will be in a running state. The task which is preempted by OS goes to ready state. The task can go in suspended state if it has nothing else to do. A basic task can enter only ready, suspended and running state. But unlike a basic task, an extended task can also enter a waiting task state in which it can wait for an OS event. CPU scheduling refers to the switching between tasks that are being executed. Now let's look at the different type of scheduling. First is non-preemptive scheduling. In the non-preemptive scheduling, a task either terminates or changes its state from running to waiting state. Second is preemptive scheduling. In the preemptive scheduling, the OS can preempt the task to execute another task on the CPU. The transition between tasks is called context switch. OS can have mix of the scheduling based on the need of the user. The interrupt is a signal emitted by hardware or software when a process or an event needs immediate attention. The functions which are executed by an interrupt are called interrupt service routines. In Autosar, Interrupt can be classified into two categories, Category 1 and Category 2. The difference between Category 1 and Category 2 ISR is that Category 1 are transparent to the OS. This means the hardware interrupt calls the interrupt service routines directly. In case of Category 2 ISR, the hardware interrupt calls an OS handler which then calls the interrupt service routine. The OS makes sure that the routine is executed on the correct stack and in the current context. This is specially necessary in the safety related applications. Interrupts can also be classified based on their processing levels. 
single level interrupts and multi level interrupts on single level platform there is a single interrupt priority if an interrupt is being handled all other pending interrupts must wait until the current processing is finished on multi level platforms there are multiple interrupt levels if an interrupt is being handled it can be preempted by an interrupt of higher priority this is sometimes called as a nested interrupt model now let us look at the events events are objects managed by operating system and are important part of task synchronization they are not independent objects but assigned to extended tasks events can be used to communicate binary information to extended tasks to which they are assigned the meaning of events is defined by the application example signaling of an expiring timer the availability of resources the reception of a message etc now let's see how events are used in preemptive scheduling in this case you can see when task 1 sets an event for task 2 scheduler is invoked immediately and task 2 is scheduled but in case of non preemptive scheduling when the task 2 sets an event for task 1 the task 1 is scheduled only after the next scheduling decision by the scheduler the resource management part of os is used to coordinate concurrent accesses of several tasks with different priorities to shared resources example scheduler program sequences memory or hardware areas resource management ensures that two tasks cannot occupy the same resource at the same time when there is more than one task accessing or modifying a shared resource at the same time then the value of the resource will be undefined to protect this from happening we need to define this resource in critical section one way to achieve the resource management in critical section is by using semaphores semaphore is essentially a non negative integer which is used to signal about availability of resources it basically uses two atomic operations wait and signal when the semaphore value is 0 then uh, it has to wait for the resource to be available and when the semaphore value is greater than 1 then a resource can be used another major problem in task scheduling is priority inversion let's understand this by an example here T1 has the highest priority and T4 has the lowest priority and a resource is being shared between T4 and T1 here task T4 which has a lower priority occupies the semaphore S1 T1 preempts T4 and requests the same semaphore as the semaphore S1 is already occupied T1 enters the waiting state now the low priority T4 is interrupted and preempted by task with a priority between t1 and t4 t1 can only be executed after all lower priority tasks have been terminated and the semaphore s1 has been released again although t2 and t3 do not use semaphore s1 they delay t1 with their run time this means that a lower priority task delays the execution of a higher priority task and this is called priority inversion Another typical problem of synchronization mechanism is deadlocks. In this case, deadlock means the impossibility of task execution due to infinite waiting for mutually locked resources. In this example, task T1 occupies the semaphore S1 and subsequently cannot continue running. Example, because it is waiting for some event to happen, thus the lower priority task T2 is transferred into the running state. it occupies the semaphore s2 if t1 gets ready again and tries to occupy semaphore s2 it enters the waiting state again if now t2 tries to occupy semaphore s1 this results in a deadlock and none of the task execution can proceed to avoid the problems of priority inversion and deadlock priority sealing protocol is used to achieve this we do the following procedure at the system generation to each resource its own ceiling priority is statically assigned the ceiling priority shall be set to at least the highest priority of all the tasks that access the resource or any of the resources linked to this resource if a task requires a resource and its current priority is lower than the ceiling priority of the resource the priority of the task is raised to the ceiling priority of the resource if the task releases the resource the priority of this task is reset to the priority to which it was dynamically assigned before requiring that resource otsr os also provides hooks for error handling and debugging 
Let's go through them one by one. Startup hook is called in the context of StartOS. Project specific functions can be implemented inside startup hook. Shutdown hook is called during the shutdown in the context of shutdown OS. Usually it is called when the microcontroller is about to turn off. Pre-task hook and post-task hook as their name suggest, pre-task hook is called just before each task execution and post-task hook is called after each task execution. For example, these can be used to for measuring the execution time of a task. Error hook will be called whenever OS identifies an unusual erroneous behavior. Inside error hook, we can identify the cause of error and store it in a no init RAM variable and take appropriate actions for recovery. For example, we have configured maximum number of activations of task is 1. Then whenever we have multiple activation of task, OS will identify it as an error and control will reach to error hook. Here we can take actions and at last protection hook. It will be called for violation of timing protection and memory protection mechanism. Now we have gone through important concepts of OS. Let's see how a typical configuration looks like. You can see that we have configured three ISRs and one counter. Rx and Tx ISR will be used for CAN communication and system time ISR will update the system counter values. We have also configured two alarms which will be updated based on counter values. When OS alarm com 5 millisecond alarm expires, an action will be taken by the scheduler. As this is for the basic task, action will be to activate OS task com 5 millisecond task. Second alarm is OS alarm software component 1 5 millisecond. When this alarm expires, it will set an OS event, OS event software component 1 5 millisecond. Upon setting of this event, Scheduler will change the state of OS task from waiting to ready and based on its priority, it will be executed. We hope now you have basic understanding of Autosar OS. Stay tuned to learn Autosar basics for upcoming interesting videos. Till then, take care.